Hello and welcome to my tree. Uh, now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you this tree being painted, uh, but I'm speeding it up. And because it was a Zoom class, and Zoom class video is never as good a quality as uh, just straight video, uh, I'm going to put it up in the top right hand corner. And you can see me painting it in, I think it's just over two minutes. So I'll set that going. Let's find an interesting bit of tree to rest the camera. There, I think we'll stop there. So this is, um, uh, before I actually start uh, the video, uh, this is um, just made out of uh, three colours, sap green, red ochre and Payne's grey, and that's it. Background, as you can see, it's just white. What else do I need to tell you? Um, is there anything I can tell you? I don't know. Probably not. So uh, off we go. Now these, um, my Zoom classes, um, I do two a month. Um, this is the one I did just the other day. So uh, it's, it's about three days ago. Um, and all the time that I'm painting these things, I'm chatting away, talking to the people who are watching, hopefully giving them encouragement. Um, but they seem to keep coming back, so maybe that's working. Anyway, so I'm using a big brush, um, usual decorating brush, bits of paper to make texture. Uh, in fact, I think I'll probably use a Q-tip on this one a couple of times. Uh, what else can I tell you? Um, a few grass effects. You may notice, by the way, in the video that there are some sort of lines across the uh, miniature video. That you know, It's just one of those zoom anomalies. A bit irritating, but there you go. So, um, and these are uh, totally imaginary. I don't have a picture in front of me, so I, I make the tree up as I go along. And I'll put a, um, the main picture will change about now, and you'll see one that I did recently, which is actually now in Australia. Uh, one of my delightful students who came here uh, bought the painting, and it is now actually safely in Australia. So uh, I'm thinking of um, actually painting a series of these trees. Maybe um, I'll do five. So I've done, uh, this is the second one. Actually, no, it's probably already the fifth, but uh, a new series. Some of them were uh, landscape shape and um, some are portrait shape. In other words, this shape, upright. So I think I'll just do uprights. A series of five, you never know. Somebody might want to buy a, a, a group of five paintings. In fact, what I'd like to do is I'd like to paint this uh, at least four times the size. That could be quite fun. Now, you can do this. Uh, you're seeing me do it, so uh, I'm sure you can probably figure out how to do it now. But the, quest, the thing about it is um, relax. Just let rip. Just let it happen. And, um, you know, we all know what trees look like. There we go. And, of course, if you don't, if you can't picture a tree in your mind, go out and take a photograph. But don't copy the photo just use it for reference. So on to today's painting, and that is this one. Okay, off we go. Um, this one is from three months ago. And uh, I think I said in the video that I would uh, return to it and do a bit of glazing. And people kept nudging me, uh, or have been nudging me over the last few months, saying, where is it, when are you going to do it? And for some reason, this this turned out to be a very popular video, which is a, a bit of a mystery to me. I think it's, you know, it's, well, you know, what can I say? Um, it's just a quick demo. It wasn't, um, I didn't consider it to be uh, anything particularly special. But people seem to like it. So, and the number of views is quite good. So anyway, let's have a, let's have another go at it. See what we can do. Um, so a bit of glazing. I'll be adding some red to the sky, I expect, uh, some light green to the landscape. I'm also going to re-sculpt the mountain that's on the right. It's got a bit of a funny edge to it, so I'll try and make that interesting. Um, the sky, I think I'm quite pleased with the sky, but I will, as I said, be putting a little bit of red in there. And uh, we'll just see what happens. And don't forget, before you start painting, 
Or if you're not going to paint, ah, that's more relevant. If you're not going to paint, settle down, hope you uh, enjoy it, relax, and have a nice cup of tea or coffee or whatever it is that you like to drink. But, but preferably, perhaps use one of these, a nice cup of tree. Let's see, does that actually focus? It does. OK, these aren't too expensive, but if you want a, a Stuart Davis mug, there's one with a tree on it. And I think that particular painting of that tree, you're not seeing it all there. That one's in America now. And, uh, yeah, I'm going to sort of, I think I'll do a whole series of trees. And one artist uh, that I really like for trees is um, Andrew Wyeth. I think his trees are absolutely incredible. So um, take a look. I'll put it. I'll put a link to some of his pictures if I remember. I don't always remember. In the box below, and um, let's see what we can do. So I'm going to start with. Uh, I think probably the r glazing in the sky and then re-sculpting this particular mountain here because I just uh, it's just not a pleasing edge to it. So I think I'll see what I can do with that. Okay, so for the, for the um, well, let's put it this way. You don't have to add Japanese red. You can use Japanese red if you can get hold of it. A lot of people say they have trouble getting it, but um, anyway, Japanese red, I've got tons of this stuff. I'm going to try a little something else. I've got orange vermilion. Now, this is not something I use much. Um, so I'm just going to see what happens. Just put that in the sky. It's quite a nice colour. Well, if it wasn't a nice colour, I probably wouldn't use it. So, um, smallish brush. Okay, the usual cheap brushes. This is a four centimetre brush or 40 millimetres in width. So, believe it or not, thoroughly checked for um, loose, loose bristles, but with cheap brushes, they are going to just keep falling out. Now, glazing. Glazing can be thick paint or thin paint. Uh, it, the actual glaze can be made out of um, lots of different things. Some people put resin in it, some people actually add varnish. Um, but all I do is add linseed oil. So let's just put some, let's just put a bit of this on and see what we get. That's quite an interesting start. Yeah, it's got a little bit of a little bit of pizzazz to it. Now, as I'm as I'm making this video, I'm talking away as I usually usually do, jabbering on about whatever comes into my mind. Now, the the cat, the cat is actually right next to me on her favourite chair, and sometimes when I talk, she answers. And today she's been particularly vocal. So if you hear me say something and the cat replies, I guess it will just add a bit of interest to the video. There we are. Cadmium orange. Isn't that interesting how it reacts with the blue? I really like that. Now, the, if I used red on that blue, it would probably come out a little bit too dark. But this is, um, this is actually starting to really excite my excitement nodules. That's really looking like a very interesting effect. Now the thing I didn't, what, what is it I didn't like about this painting? Okay, well, uh, I mean it's okay, it's um, quite often, let me explain, quite often a demo painting isn't what I would call a, um, a masterpiece, depending on my mood. You know, if I'm really concentrating, I think some of them end up quite nice. Um, but uh, uh, I just thought, what was it? I what was trying to say, it seemed a little bit empty, didn't have enough going on. But I guess it's in the eye of the beholder. So I don't know. What can I say? I'm very grateful that people look at my videos anyway. So. There we are. A little bit rattly today. Why are we so rattly? Never mind. Um, now, this uh, video 
if I can get it on, done in time, um, it's going to be, a, I'll probably premiere it so that I'll be answering questions while you're watching, in case you want to ask me anything. Uh, if I don't premiere it, it's because I didn't get it done in time. And it would just be an ordinary YouTube video. But I do like the, I do like doing the premieres because I like I like the, the idea of... Well, it's not chatting because, you know, it's typing, but live typing to uh, the people who are watching is always quite fun. It's a little bit testy because sometimes, you know, I'm, I'm not the world's best typist. Certainly not the world's fastest. But uh, I go as fast as I can. Right, so yeah, this, I, I think, cadmium orange is um, going to appear in quite a few of my paintings. Let's just sort of splash it about. Now, um, the thing about glazing, right, it is not uh, a precise science. It's not a... Um, an exact science. It's one of these things where I, it's an artistic science. Okay, how about that? You just sort of put the paint on and then stop when it looks as though you've achieved something interesting. I really actually do like that. Completely different effect from um, Japanese red. But quite nice. I like it sort of picks up a nice nice sort of glow. And um, I get lots of questions about glazing. Some people say they try it and it just doesn't work. I'm not quite sure what's going on if, that, if it's not working because as you can see, oh, of course, obviously the painting, the original painting is completely bone dry. I mean, it's three months ago. So it is dry. And it's not thick paint, it's all very thin paint, there are, there are no real lumps on there. Um, it's, it's a difficult thing to get wrong glazing. I'm going to just put a little bit more there. When I paint skies now, I used to paint skies in I suppose what I could describe as... Um, me skies, in other words, Stuart Davis skies, without much influence. But the older I get, funnily enough, the more I'm influenced by uh, Turner. William Turner's skies are quite incredible. And um, when I was a student, and, uh, well, a lot younger, um, I didn't sort of try to emulate people's famous artists skies uh, but now I'm now I'm getting older I don't know what it is how can I explain it sounds a bit silly I suppose but I mean I just I, I want to be a little bit more wild about what I'm doing a little bit more over the top I don't want to get my I don't want my paintings to become garish uh, but I do want them to have a little bit of how can I put it a bit of fire in the sky let's put it that way It'll make sense to some people, but some people will think I'm definitely losing the plot. But there you go. Right. Yeah, I'm really... I'm sorry to go on about it, but I'm really enjoying this colour. This is quite a... quite a fiery little sky. Uh, I, I'll leave the sky in a moment, and I'll get down to this hill because um, that's going to take a little bit of major work. Let's just adjust where we are. OK, so there's, there's that hill. Now, for that, I'm going to... Um, what am I going to do? I'm going to find a brush that works, for starters. Oh, I could probably use this. I want some um, sap green and red ochre. I've got some here left over from the other day. Um, and it's one of these things, you know, you use certain colours and they dry very fast. For some reason, they dry even faster on a glass palette, and I haven't figured that out yet. But 
you do tend to find that the browns and sap green, I mean, when I say brown, I mean red ochre, they do dry very quickly. And I'll try this, it might not work. If not, I'll wipe it off. No, so there's, there's this weird, humpy little hill. What do I want to do with it? Well, I want to give it, I want to give it a bit more character. Okay, so let's just do a tester with the brush. See what, see what we get. Okay, that's good. I want to give it a bit of a, a bit of an edge. There. Make it a little bit, a little bit more dramatic. Let's take that up a bit. Now this is, I'm working wet on wet here, but I'm, it's not like normal wet on wet. It's wet on a very um, thin film of paint. So it's not going to sort of get bogged down. But I, I want to give a feeling of a little bit of, a little bit more drama over there. And that could be the sort of drama that I want. I also, this pale colour here, I want, there's something about that shape I did not find pleasing, so I think that is slightly more pleasing. It was too, um, too much like a reversed letter C, and now that's gone. I've got a little bit more, a little bit more, um, I don't know what it is, but it's in there, isn't it? Nice ragged top to the hill. Nothing, nothing in nature you see is perfectly smooth. Um, I know there's <laughs> someone will disagree with that, but anyway. Um, now this hill here in the middle. What do I want to do with that? That's also a little bit. It sort of works, but it's just I don't know. It just hasn't got enough fire in the belly. Let's put. Let's put a bit of an edge there coming into the sky too. Let's just have something here and there, and then take that across that way. That's much, much more interesting. Okay, let's just build up a few shapes and turn it into something that's a little bit more A little bit more dramatic. Dramatic and distant. You see, I'm blurring. You see, I'm not blurring here, but I'm blurring there. That's the real distance bit, that bit. This is slightly, um, well, not necessarily closer, but it's catching a different light. Slightly crisp top. And then over here, blending into the sky just a touch. Okay, and then off the other side, I think we'll just take that up slightly. I think you can see all of that. Okay, so that's turned into quite a craggy bit of um, bit of skyline there. What should we do here? So we've got these, what am I going to do for the foreground? That's what I'm trying to ask myself. What am I going to do in the foreground? I think I'll add some of the heat from the sky to the land. Then I'm going to add a few bits of light green. I think that'll make it a little bit more interesting. And then that'll probably be it. I don't want this to go on forever. The thing about, um, I think, the thing about when you premiere a video, it's probably best not to make it too long. Unless, let me know if you don't agree. I, I, you know, I don't, I don't always talk sense. Um... <laughs> Ask my wife. Uh, I, I, I sort of quite like long videos, but I know that not everybody will hang around to see the entire video. OK, so a little bit of restructuring over there. Down here, I'm going to not touch these trees until I've put some, some warmth on the landscape. So a little bit more oil. A little bit more orange and then just sort of scrub it into the land a bit just to heat things up because if you've got that kind of sky it's probably going to reflect well not reflect but it'll warm the landscape a bit it's 
just a general sort of dusting of heat. It's not something you want to overdo, it's, it's, a, it's a, a hint. In other words, just warm it up a bit. Hardly anything on the brush, as you can see. And here, let's have a little bit slightly more red in there. Definitely warmed it up a bit. So um, now for the light green, I could use a brush, but I could also use a palette knife and I'm a bit into palette knives at the moment. So maybe I'll do that. Um, so this is light green. Now light green, as, as I'm sure I've said before, is green that is not dark. It's light, it's that color there. And um, I don't know, I just like it when it's applied with a palette knife. Let's see what happens. Um, not a vast amount, just a little bit. Let's start out... Um, where should we start? Let's do a little bit um, on the hill here. Question is, do I need to zoom in a bit? Let's try it. Right, a little bit over there. Now, just a touch on this hill. How does that look in the camera? If it looks good in the camera, it uh, usually means that's the time to stop. I don't mean stop the whole thing, I mean stop that particular bit. So I think we'll have a um, little bit there. Just a few little patches really, and I think definitely down here. And of course I probably should move the camera. So just a little bit, um, a few what I hope will be interesting textures on the ground. Yeah, contrast. Contrast always does it, but don't, you know, don't go over the top. There's a difference between contrasty and garish. You don't want, to, you don't want it garish. You want it interesting and, you know, whatever you know is. Yeah, I quite like the way that sits on the ground. Over this way here, let's have a few marks as well. I was telling my students the other evening that um, if you're going to be, if you want to really get into landscape painting, it's actually worth going out and just looking at fields. Now it sounds like a boring pastime, you know, a field watcher, <laughs> um, but you know, it, it doesn't involve buying an album and sticking pictures in it. It just means going out, look at the, um, look at the ground, look at fields and how over the uh, centuries that they have been marked. There's all kinds of textures you get on the ground. A field is very rarely just a green patch, unless it's, you know, one particular crop and there's nothing else there, just whatever it is, you know, just who knows what it's called, I don't know. But anyway, there's sometimes you see a field which is just like a, almost like um like an artificial green. It's just too perfect. But the one the ones that are interesting are the fields that um are grass and you know have been uh corn and then changed to um 
something else, you know, kale or whatever, uh, over the years, and it sort of left marks on the ground. So that they they build up a patina. And um, they get interesting. Scrapes and scratches and stuff like that. That's what I'm that's what I'm on about. I think that yeah, that's good. See like here, we've got all kinds of different tones going through there. And um, this is what fields are like. And occasionally, you know, you get a line across a field, uh, which may not be a path, it could just be a dividing line. There was one crop one side and one the other. My goodness, I'm sounding like a complete nerd. Anyway, um, you know, just go out and sort of absorb, absorb what's in front of you. I suppose that's a way of doing it. I think we should have something there. It's a good thing about palette knives like this, you know, you just sort of iron away, just go mad with it. And you'll end up with something quite, quite effective. And if you don't, which I just see that I haven't here, just get a bit of paper and just sort of wipe it. And trust me, it'll turn into something much more interesting, like that. OK. Right, foreground. A little bit more down here. Now, I could be putting other colours on there. In fact, I might, I might just put a little bit of... Um, a little bit of red ochre and I'm going to mix that with the light green and that will give me this colour which you may be able to see that's that colour it's like a toned down uh, orangey browny colour some colours don't have names you know they just um, they become things like bluish Bluish and yellowish. I think that's starting to get interesting. Let's just zoom back, touch that. Okay, what should we do? I think over there needs something. Oh, and I, um, yeah, the bit you missed earlier was just that bit of green I added to the side of the hill there. Right, so. What am I going to do? Right here, there, I think that that needs something. I'm not sure whether it needs a palette knife. So I'm not. I'm going to just hold back on that for a minute and just sort of finish off what I was doing down the bottom there. Right, I think that makes that slightly more interesting. I think this line across here needs to be blurred slightly. Like so, a bit more there. I don't want to have repetitive lines. In fact, I don't like anything particularly repetitive in a painting at all. Um, this this hill, I wonder whether, what can I do with that? I think I'm just not quite happy with it, so I'm going to have a little, I'm going to fool around with it. Especially if I get the camera to go the right way. See what we can do with that. I mean, I'm sort of quite liking it. But I think it just needs a little tiny bit of paperwork. Um, what should we do? I think we'll just make a loop like this. And then use this side of the loop here, and just see what we can what we can do in there. That whoops, that will start to become slightly interesting. Let's just have a few, a few of those. Almost what I want, not quite. Hmm. Yep, that might do it. It's not 
quite what I want, but there you go. I think it needs a bit of light on top, or does it? I think that might that might do it. Um, what else do we want to do? Let's have a look, look around here. Okay, so I've got some weird thing going on there. Do I want that? Just want to break it slightly. Makes it a bit more interesting. Okay, so let's carry on over here. I've got my distance area. That's sort of fair enough. Go down that edge there. Okay, so there's a big area of not a lot happening down here. Now that's okay, I mean, um, but it could be just a little bit boring. So I think, I think I'm going to do something with these trees just here. There's something not quite definite about enough about that, so I think I should strengthen that one. And basically add some ground lines coming across there. I want to, as you see, I don't want it flat, I'd rather have it as a, a basin uh, shape. It just seems a bit more interesting. And let's just pull something down there as well, why not? You see, it's a lot of it is trial and error. Um, and the trick, of course, uh, often is to know when to stop trying and just leave it and move on. And then maybe you can come back to, OK, I see, I see a problem. Right. And then come back to it when you've had time to think about it. Right. These trees here. OK, so what have we got? What's wrong? There's something not right. I don't know what it is. I can't explain. So I'll just sort of see what I can do. I, I think that needs strengthening on its top edge. And I think a similar thing to these and make them a bit more irregular. There is some light showing through on that tree, but it was just not quite doing it for me. Let's make that one just a little bit taller. And down through there like so. OK, good. Now, we're almost coming to the end. And uh, hope you've enjoyed it anyway. And um, maybe see you on the next one. I hope so. If you want to come to a Zoom class, uh, links will be below. If you want to be a patron, there'll be a link for that too. Uh, if you are a patron, you also get a chance to own a painting. I'm giving away two paintings a month to patrons, and not just patrons, but also people who come to the um, classes. Uh, I think I've given away about four at the moment. Um, the people may not have received them yet because I'm waiting for them to dry, but they, they know who they are and they know that there's going to be a painting coming to them. So uh, there are perks. OK, so these, these trees here, I think they need strengthening. Definitely something needs to be doing, done down there. A little just, I don't know what it is. A little bit of defining, I suppose. Quite like the idea of a tree that is done so quickly it's almost not thought about. It's just it's like an accidental tree. Darken the land below it slightly. Yeah, just a little line of shrubbery there. That one could probably have a bit more interesting shape to it. Let's just sort of wiggle it till it looks good. OK, I think that's as far as I might go, actually. 
There's streaks in the paint in the sky. Don't mind that at all. Quite like it. Uh, it seems to suit the picture. Let's zoom back so you can see what I'm talking about. Uh, but if they do worry you, I'll show you what you do with them. Okay, piece of paper. Make it into um, the mushroom shape for wiping. What's that shape? There, you want a smooth bit and then just small circular mo motion like so. That'll take any, away any hard lines that you don't want. Uh, but I, I quite like them. I think it's interesting. There we are. Okay, so thanks for being here. Hope you've enjoyed it. Hope you've learned something. And uh, I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.